our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Europe has always been part of the space race, right from the first beep beeps of Sputnik. There are some national space agencies, but the European Space Agency, ESA, unifies their efforts, making Europe a respected power in the space industry, with a range of activities including automated and manned flights and exploring deep space, looking for the origins of the universe. The OECD has been interested in the space sector since 2000, 2003, because we realized it was an invaluable means of addressing the challenges of the 21st century. We're talking about the environment, food security, education systems, telemedicine. We're talking about a range of issues touching almost all public policy. The OECD, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, is an international organization based in Paris whose experts analyze, forecast and recommend economic policies to developing countries. We tend to see the space sector as being a space sector economy in the same way that there's a transport economy, a security economy, a health economy. So there's now a space sector economy, which means that it's now one of the most dynamic sectors in the economic environment. OHB is a private company based in Bremen, Germany, a town which lives and breathes aerospace industries. The company was founded 31 years ago with just 50 employees. The founder's son runs it today with around 2,300 highly qualified employees. This real success story began in around 2000 with the construction of a flotilla of military radar observation satellites for the German army. The government has made a competition. And in the beginning, we were not uh, ready to do it in the beginning, in the, in the early time. But then we said, OK, now we, are, we have satellites in orbit, and uh, why not? And so we have made proposals, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and the competition uh, was there, and uh, we were finally the winner. We were cheaper, quicker, and uh, reliable. Having snatched this contract from under the noses of larger companies, OHB is today a company which is expanding fast, combining the imperatives of profit, efficiency and reliability. It makes them competitive. I think the European space industry is globally a very, very competitive, very efficient industry. If you compare Europe with other regions of the world, I think Europe is by far the region with the highest commercial uh, percentage of, of, uh, of business. And that's um, probably a result from a well-organized competitive landscape. Galileo, the satellite positioning system which the EU and ESA are starting to deploy, has allowed OHB to score another big goal. In 2010, they won the contract to construct 22 of the 30 satellites in the Galileo constellation. Once again, they were faster, cheaper and more reliable. One activity in the private sector is developing very fast. On the one hand, in one part of the industrial sector, there are manufacturing launches and satellites. And competition is growing all over the world. And at the same time, on the other hand, there are practical applications which are essentially being developed by the private sector. On the outskirts of Madrid, another SME also seems unaffected by the crisis which is devastating Spain. In enormous offices, dozens of people are working at their computers and the striking thing is their youth. You are in 
a global competence nowadays. This is a, this is a run where there are uh, millions of people just at this moment thinking about developing new technologies, new things. So really, we have to, in Europe, we have to think about this and we have to work hard uh, to develop talent, to develop technologies. And of course, the space is a very good place to do that. But here, they aren't working only with computers or concepts. They also work with the concrete. For example, exploring the future with the help of robots. This machine is a moon rover. It's a real joy to work on vehicles that will perform space missions in the future. I came into the space industry because in my childhood I wanted to be the captain of the Star Trek spaceship. I was brought up in a small village of 1,300 inhabitants, and when I saw Star Trek or Star Wars, I said to myself, I want to build one of these spaceships. Childhood daydreams can become a vocation, leading to a career in the space industry, with its cutting-edge technologies and rigorous methodology when executing tasks. There's no room for chance here. Estoy... I'm drawing up plans for a new motor for the driving system for the rover. It will control the direction of the rover on Earth and in the future on the Moon. I studied engineering and I wanted to work on applications different to those offered by the market. Then I came to the space sector and I'm extremely pleased because our daily work is innovating and developing new applications. In the vast field of applications, the company has specialised in satellite control, particularly for large telecommunications satellites, which are hard to manage. More down to earth, intelligent systems derived from space have been adapted to solve problems in daily life. We are mainly working in uh, transportation, for instance, where we develop intelligent systems for transportation using GPS and other technologies. Information security, where we provide solutions for uh, security of uh, IT systems. Uh, defense, aeronautics, and telecommunications in general. And healthcare, for instance, that is also a very promising industry where we are also working. A new program called Radiance is a good example. The concept is more than 30 years old, but it needed good IT tools to become really useful. Radiance is a software package that helps specialists define very precise data for radiotherapy treatment of the risky zone, of the tumor zone. The principle is simple. Once certain cancers are removed, the patient receives radiotherapy on the affected zone. Radiance is very useful before radiotherapy because it helps the radiotherapist to see a modelization of the zone to be treated, to calculate the angle at which the irradiation tube should be placed and above all to visualize the radiation intensity which must be used to get a good result without damaging healthy cells. This procedure is performed immediately after the surgical removal of the tumour. It permits us to avoid, for instance, in cases of breast cancer, the patient going through six or eight weeks of radiotherapy. It will be reduced to one single radiotherapy session just after the surgery. This technology relies on tools developed for remote control healthcare, which is being developed in daily life using satellites to abolish distances, as well as for healthcare for astronauts working or travelling in space. In the sense that we use latest developments for the national or international public good, it goes along with the idea that the policy of primary data could at least be in part free of charge, so as to have access to relatively reduced costs, because the added value is in these applications. So there is simultaneously the notion of the public getting some benefit from public money, and the fact that the real added value comes from applications. Autumn is a beautiful season in nature, but this autumn is a hard one for the European countries struggling with the economic crisis. 
Their industries are suffering too. But the space industry is the exception. We are overcoming the crisis, I would say, much better than perhaps other industries. Why? Because uh, when you have uh, solutions specialized based in key technologies, probably in the good times you don't make as much, as much profit as others, but in the bad times your needs, the, the needs you are aiming are still there and your products are still needed. For the last uh, 10 years, um, the space industry is ha having a good development. I think is because that's because of the usefulness of the products that our industry at large uh, supplies to society. Galileo can provide numerous useful applications to various users. Positioning, of course, but also security, agriculture, new transport management. The list is infinite. We were probably the first to demonstrate that beyond the notion of technology, it was an economic sector, it was a real industry. And when we define the economy of a sector as a disruptive technology, that means you have an industry or a new sector which affects production systems, consumption patterns and lifestyles. So this is a disruptive technology, just like electricity, or rail transport were in the past. Society has always profited from disruptive technologies. First steam engines and then the internal combustion engine replaced animal and human traction. With its research to perfect launches and satellites and an infinite number of operating systems, the space industry has become a real motor for competitiveness and growth. <laughs>